welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who is taking a break from trying to catch an invisible gorilla. It's David Cross. What's going on, dude? So, you walked into a gorilla cage with an invisible, aggressive gorilla, and you left the door open. Thoughts? Yeah, I should have paid more attention in my safety class, honestly. My teacher would have been really upset with me. Oh, <laughs> no. I'm just glad no one got hurt. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question for you. So in Hollow in Hollow Man, I was going to say Halloween. They're both horror movies, I guess. In, and they're both about kind of floaty things that linger in the background, hunting people. <laughs> hey! But this... Okay, there's a scene in this movie where Josh Brolin lets out a... Matt lets out a big gorilla who's invisible. And Sebastian Kane, played by Kevin Bacon, is like, hey, I'll I'll get your back. I'll... I'll chase this gorilla down with you. And they're like 10 bucks for whoever shoots it with a tranquilizer. And the two chase down the gorilla and Brolin misses horribly. Like he, it made me believe that something was wrong with the dart gun, <laughs> how badly he misses in this movie. But then Bacon nails the gorilla and the gorilla knocks, falls down and, and goes unconscious. And Bacon's like, hey, hey, Brolin, pay up. And Brolin's like, put it on my tab. What a sore loser. Yeah, that's true. It's true. But you know, he might also be feeling bullied into doing that type of stuff with um, Sebastian. If you and I are, if we work in a lab together trying to make invisible weapons for the military, and I take a $10 bet from you and I win and you don't pay, I'm going to be annoyed. It's not a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Considering considering what they're doing, they're funded by the government, they should have enough money to spend those $10 uh, pay up, pay-ups. Now, I know Sebastian Kane, played by Kevin Bacon, is the villain in this film. However, I think if Brolin would have won, he would have given Brolin 10 bucks. So if Bacon won, or if Bacon lost, right, he would have paid up. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brolin's what? character was just being a cheapskate. <laughs> and then at the end of this film, spoilers, when the entire lab blows up, do all the animals die? Oh, why did you bring that up? I didn't think about it. Of course they do. Wow. It kind of bums oh. me out that they're testing on Gorilla. That, you know that thing on YouTube's gotten 22 million views, by the way? Matt, like, this thing has gotten about 50... The, all the clips from Fandango on YouTube have about 50 million views for Hollow Man. And then, like, so many people watch those invisibility clips. And they, I mean, good they're good clips, I mean, even they, for today. <laughs> I mean, they were nominated for an Academy Award for it. I mean, there's some excellent special effects. But yeah, all the animals died, dude. Oh, I didn't think about that, and I'm now... I'm, I'm like, rolling it through my head. I'm very sad. Right? It's, yeah, yeah. You know the guy who did this, Scott Anderson, he was nominated for an Academy Award. He also did Doctor Sleep recently, which visually blew me away. And he also worked on The Shallows, which I found to be a very impressive film. He also did Tintin, Superman Returns, Lovely Bones, King Kong, Sky Captain, Starship Troopers, Abyss, and T2. Those are all good. I love Doctor Sleep, and I highly recommend everyone check it out. Yeah. I'm probably going to watch the extended version, too. Uh, I'm going to buy the Blu-ray, because I think there's a commentary on it. So I got, you know me, man, I got to, I got to, I, I need more Rose the Hat. <laughs> She's so, so good. She's like the best villain of 2019. Oh, hands down. And you, I, I think I told this story. You've heard it on the pod, but th I read that book and it gave me a night. I woke up screaming one night thinking that she was standing. I, I was on a cruise and some, we left the door open to the, what you get like the, you can step outside and step on it. I don't know what you call it. We had a nice little deck and I, for some reason I woke up and I thought she was standing in the door. This is back six years ago and i just started yelling so when i saw <laughs> on the cruise on yeah, the cruise so when i you know woke up my wife she's like what so but uh, when i saw the movie rebecca ferguson nailed basically what i saw in my head it was a very excellent casting i would say she was solid yeah and it was beautiful and just just sort of like this movie yeah this guy yeah this scott anderson guy who does the visual effects i i watched all the behind the scenes uh clips for this and so they, you know, they would have Kevin Bacon in green, blue, or black, depending on the scene. And Kevin Bacon, when he signed on, he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really don't have to do much in this movie. But he was on the set all the time wearing various outfits. I don't know if you know that. Like, he, did you watch the behind the scenes? I didn't watch the behind the scenes, but I was reading interviews with him. And he did say that he's like, I thought I was going to cash in and just like be there for half of the shoot and shoot. And then that was it. And then... Verhoeven brought him back because he couldn't get good performances out of the actors without him there. And so this, so they were in a pool, right? There's a scene where a guy is mm -hmm. smoking a pipe and falls in a pool, which I think highlights the, the great special effects in this film. 
But when they, uh, all right, I have a question for you real quick. Mm-hmm. Would you rather die by a graboid coming from the ground and dragging you into the ground and you're dead, or Kevin Bacon invisible drowning you in a pool? Oh, I think that's pretty hard. Wow. So I die no matter what. So it's a bad case scenario. I I think I would rather go out by graboid. Yeah, because once the graboids are figured out, right? You're mm-hmm. gonna, people are gonna like when when they talk about what happened to Mark. Oh, he drowned in a pool. They're not gonna know that a naked Kevin Bacon drowned me. There, but when they're like Mark got killed by a prehistoric underground monster. And he blew up one of them. I'm saying we we blow up one if we're going to die, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah, absolutely. He blows up one of them, and then the tremor actually gets him stuck in his in his um, windpipe and 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 dies. So we actually killed two graboids, but we're dead too. <laughs> that story would be everywhere. And so it's like, what happened to Hoffmeyer? Graboid, like first known graboid, and boy did he fight. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. At least my story would live on in in the future. So there'd be a hit movie about it, but if you just drown in a pool, eh. Can I can I ask you something weird? Yeah. All right. So we're friends. You're on the podcast. We've known each other for well, almost a decade now. Uh, and yeah. Uh, but if I heard you got eaten by a graboid, I'd be sad. But maybe six months later, I'm like, man, David got eaten by a. Gra- I, I would. <laughs> I would kind of chuckle. I, is that bad? Like, I wouldn't be happy, but I'd be like, man, he got eaten by a graboid. Like, what? It's just so absurd. Yeah. <laughs> and he blew one up, and then he fought so hard he got stuck in the thing's windpipe? <laughs> it's like, like, that's how I want to go out. Yeah. Killing two historic animals. Yeah. <laughs> this is a video game. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be happy, man. I just want you to know that. But I also think it would be pretty interesting. I think yeah. it's appropriate. That's All an right. appropriate response. Absolutely. All right, All right, and then another thing in this film, I don't know if you noticed it, but when... Sebastian and Linda and Matt go to the government to say, hey, we need more time, even though our experiments, we were ready for phase three. Like, we're ready for phase three. They just lied because they want to go to human testing and he wants to do it. They don't want it taken away from him. There's a general who they refuse to give a line to who remained an extra who would, who didn't get the sag bump for a line. And he whispers in Dr. Kramer's ear. What do you think he said? <laughs> and was he Dr. Kramer's boss? <laughs> oh, I don't even remember that. That's amazing that you spotted it. That's well, cool. it's a great in, question. In movies, I love. I don't know if you ever watch movies. Uh, you watch movies, of course. But when you watch movies, and even if you're listening, sometimes they go out of their way to not give people lines where it's so obvious that they 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 should have a line, but they don't want to pay them, right? So this nameless important person has no line whatsoever. I think I know what he's going to ask. He, like, leans in real close, probably smells like cigarettes and mints, and he goes, I think I'm going to have a turkey sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) He's, like, not even paying attention at all. Does this this jacket look make me look fat? (laughs) Yeah. That's exactly what he did. He just was he was just not paying attention. He was worried about an hour from now when he had to meet his wife at the the commissary to get his turkey sandwich. Because it's the government. You know how many underground layers they have across the world? Like they have a raptor training facility. They have uh, an invisible man facility, right? They have a graboid facility. He doesn't know what's up in the air with all these. Yeah, he's probably in one of these meetings every other day, like, oh, you're going you're gonna to make this guy super strong? Sure, whatever. Today's BLT day. <laughs> the, the biggest problem with this kind of invisible man is that they can be sensed by heat. You know, you put on the goggles. So when you send them into combat, right, mm-hmm. you would just have one person with the goggles on, right? Yeah, yeah. It it, it works in a espionage setting, like once, <laughs> and then <laughs> the first right, time. It's like, yeah, it was the first time, and everyone's like, oh, "We think there's an invisible man. We'll just we'll just put some you know heat vision in, and well, there's the invisible man." <laughs> they better when they use him for the first time. It better be so. Do you think the generals in the room want invisible people so that they can spy on their family members because they're never home, so they don't want their family members getting up to shenanigans? So they want a bunch of naked, invisible people spying on their families to make sure they're not getting anything bad. So I don't think they want a bunch of 
naked, invisible people near their families? Because the key word there is naked. <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. And that, that actually leads me into a question for you, Mark. Yeah. If you were invisible, what is the first thing you would do? And it's funny that we're talking about being naked because while watching this movie, so he's basically, he's just walking around naked all the time. Yeah, exactly. And it's probably chilly in there. I just put on some pants. I, yeah. put on a, I put on a shirt. I put on a hat. Just so, like, so I'm just talking about me. I'm not, all right, so I'm not Sebastian Kane. I'm not a guy who calls himself God. I'm not a brilliant scientist who's used to getting what he wants. I'm not, I do love in his house, though, that he has a sign that says you should be working. That's a really neat character touch. I love yeah. that. That's, yeah. that's brilliant. Like, that, I'm not brilliant hyperbole, but that's a very smart move by the production to put that up there. It really explains his character really well. Uh, but I'm not him. So I wouldn't want to creep out my coworkers. I I wouldn't – like, I would just put clothes on, and so they knew where I was at all moments. I wouldn't be a creep. Yeah, yeah. That, so, so I, I know that's I, not exciting, I, but are you talking about, like, something illegal or just – No, no, like, no, no, oh, no. Okay. I, think, I think you answered it really well. You You were thinking more narrow than me, but we're on similar routes. If I turned invisible – the first thing I would do was move somewhere warm because I'm naked and I'm going to be naked all the time. But you're right. Probably the absolute first thing I was going to do would put some pants on because <laughs> you're you're like deep down inside a laboratory that's probably 65 degrees constantly. Like it's going to be freezing. And also your coworker is going to be wearing those goggles. In a real life situation, if you were invisible, they would be wearing the goggles at all times. So then it becomes an HR problem. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, I know it's a secret government-funded thing, but your coworkers can be like, listen, man, put on pants. <laughs> so, right? You're I would still just, getting hair everywhere and dirt. <laughs> I'd put shoes on. I would let them know where I was. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, again, aren't a guy who refers to himself as God. Yeah. Uh, I also have a comment about that sign above his above his workstation. That's like the fastest save the cat moment I have seen. Like, you're introduced to that character within 30 seconds. You're like, oh, he works really hard. And then immediately you turn into he's also a perv. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's so crazy. I I love that character introduction. And it, I would – so my favorite that I can think of right now that explains the character – and there's a movie, Born Legacy, with Jeremy Renner, Rachel Weisz, and Edward Norton. When we first meet Edward Norton's character, he's running in the rain – at 4 a.m. So, hey, that's a government program gone awry. But when mm -hmm. you see a guy in the morning at 4 a.m. running in the rain, that says everything you need to know about the character, right? Yeah, yeah. And I love, and I, I thought that was kind of cool. But this movie, I was 18 when this came out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how old were you? Uh, 17 or 18. I saw it in a drive-in theater. So when you were 17, 18 in 2000, which is, I mean, it was a different era. But it was a different, like, what did you think? Did you think? think there was this movie all right so adam uh hodgins was supposed to join us and he loves this movie but he sent me a message he's like hey man i can't make it he's like and i have some thoughts he said that this movie's icky yeah yeah it's ickier it gets ickier it hasn't aged well at all but i remember <laughs> when i first watched it i was like these special effects are amazing and yeah. i didn't put myself into the i didn't have the the ick moments i had like this is strange I just sort of accepted it. But now watching it, I'm like, there's some questionable decisions being made in this film. But there are also, quite frankly, like things I really like about it. But it's it's a difficult film to talk about in terms of just how it aged, frankly. I got I to gotta answer one thing. So Adam sent me an answer to the invisibility. I just want to let you know. Yeah. He said that he would go on stage and wreck all of Penn and Teller's magic tricks. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. And he said it made him feel icky. But you know what? So I was read. I started reading a bunch of interviews, and I got. Uh, and we're talking about L in an upcoming podcast, which is another Verhoeven movie that's actually Oscar nominated and uh, returned to the Verhoeven form. And so during his press tour for that, he said that Hollow Man was his least favorite film, mm -hmm. and he never mentioned anything about the 